Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice today. As you can see, I have no props, but if you'd like a block or a bolster or a blanket uh, or anything at all for more comfort, even a chair nearby to help with balance, please feel free. We are going to make our way into a comfortable seat or a comfortable position. So you can lie down, you can sit up, you can change position at any time. Ah, once you are comfortable, perhaps close your eyes. Perhaps begin to breathe through your nose if you can. And allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive here in the present. And notice the feeling of where your body touches the floor. And where air and clothing touches your skin. And begin to get a sense of kind of your own inner space versus all of the space around you, that there's sort of a connection point through our senses. And there's also this connection or this relationship with the breath. And so as we inhale, we're inviting that outer air into our body. As we exhale, we're releasing that inner air back out. Inhaling, let's soften the belly and really invite that breath to land nice and deep. As we exhale, letting the air just roll out on its own. Again, each inhale, let's soften the belly to expand with the in-breath. Each exhale, there is an inward movement, but there's more just a simple release of the breath, not rushing it out, letting it roll out. I know we talk about the breath in every practice, but it's such a, a powerful piece of this puzzle. Let's tune into the breath and follow along. Inviting the inhale to land deep. And the exhale to roll out slow. This is a relaxation breath pattern. It is proven to nudge you towards a deeper sense of relaxation, of calm, of peace. Inhaling deep. Exhaling slow. Slowing down the breath. It slows down our thoughts. And as we slow down our thoughts, we begin to inhabit the present moment. And the present moment where your body always resides. Your body is always present. So once more, let's tune in to the presence of our own physical being. You might notice where your body touches the floor, that gentle bit of pressure. You might notice air and clothing touching your skin. You might notice that the inhale expands the body in all directions. And the exhale draws the body back in from all directions. And so let's offer three or four more breaths to this pose. Each exhale a little longer than the last.
And perhaps with eyes still closed and only if it suits you, press a hand to the chest, a hand to the belly. And ask yourself why you are here. And listen for your own answer. And now let's offer ourselves some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. Feel that kindness landing in your own body, given by your own giving hands. And now we'll release our hands, open our eyes. So we will be bringing a little bit of movement to the upper body before we get moving throughout the whole body. Um, so if you're seated, you might want to give your legs a shake or sit in any other comfortable way. If you're lying down, move nice and slow to make your way to a comfortable upright seat. You could do this bit of movement um, kneeling with hips off of heels. You could also be sitting on the edge of a chair and you could change position at any time. I will move from kneeling uh, just to keep it easy for me. So we're actually mostly focusing on the arms and shoulders at this point. We're going to bring the palms together. And at first we'll press the palms together and just do a little bit of a tug of war here as we press those palms from side to side. It's sort of like one arm is winning against the other, but they're both pressing and resisting as we go. It's okay if your hands only move a little bit here. We're just hoping to create a little bit of heat, a little bit of connected connection to strength as we push those hands side to side. So we'll do that a couple more times either direction. Moving at your own pace. Great. So we'll meet back at center. We will release the palms, but keep the fingertips pressed together. Yeah. Now we can reach the pinky fingers away from each other and back together. The ring fingers away, back together. Middle fingers away, and together. Index fingers away, and together. Thumbs away, together. Again, press those fingertips together, and we'll do that one more time. Maybe we inhale the pinkies away, Exhale the pinkies together. We bring fingers away together. Inhale the middle fingers away. Press together. Inhale the index fingers away. Press together. The thumbs away. And together. Hopefully you're starting to feel some connection now through the hands and forearms. Let's interlace the fingers. We'll do some gentle kind of circling here through the fists. Yeah. Just tune into the breath here. Make sure the body still feels comfortable. If there's a direction that those fists seem to be turning, you can reverse that. There's not always. That's okay. We'll do this for a couple more breaths. And now we'll separate the heels of the palms, but the fingertips are still interlaced. Begin to make some waves. Making waves. Yeah. Just notice if you can allow those shoulders to kind of find a fluid way to take part in this wave making. Uh -huh. And then notice if you can change direction. Again, it might not be possible. There might not be a direction. 
And we soften through the shoulders a bit and even let those waves get a little bigger. Ooh, very wavy. Couple more breaths. All right, final piece here, if you so choose. You know, Press the palms away from us. Yeah, if the interlaced fingers aren't comfortable, you can do this without the fingers interlaced. Let's press through the heel of one palm and then the other. Just a couple times, pressing. And then we'll press through the heels of both palms. We'll sweep the arms overhead or something like it. We can stop at any point, keep those elbows as bent as we need to. And again, we'll press through the heel of one palm and then the other. And this could be the tiniest bit of movement, starting to open up through one side of the body and then the other, feeling that connection between those arms. Once more, we'll press through the heels of both palms. We'll float those arms down by our sides. So we'll turn that last little bit into a bit of a flow. We're gonna turn the palms out, float the arms up, and those palms could press together. Remember that palm press? We're gonna try it here. Bring it down, interlace the fingers, and we press forward again, sweeping the arms up and back down. Now I'm gonna cue the breath a bit like we did with the finger presses. You can ignore that if you want, but some folks like it. We're gonna inhale the arms up. Exhale the arms to the chest. Interlace, inhaling, pressing, and sweeping the arms overhead. Exhale, release. And we'll do that one more time. Inhale up. Exhale, press. Interlace, interlace, press, and sweep. And release. And you can do that little arm flow anytime you need to just energize and release tension from those shoulders and really enliven those hands and wrists. From here, let's make our way to hands and knees, tabletop position. So as you make your way here, notice if you need extra support under the knees. Um, notice if you prefer to be on forearms, that's definitely possible for some of these movements. Or even coming onto the tops of fists. So we'll move through some familiar cat-cow here. We're inhaling at center. And again, I'm going to cue the breath a little extra in this practice and just notice if that serves you or not. We exhale to tuck the tailbone under and complete that rounding. And we inhale to turn the tailbone up and slowly begin to articulate, to arch the spine. Again, exhaling, tuck the tailbone under, press those shoulder blades apart, squeeze the belly, Inhale, change direction. Slowly invite that arching, that extension up the spine. Maybe close your eyes, drop into the breath. It seems we're exhaling to round. And inhaling to arch. Let's do that a few more times in either direction. Again, that slow articulation up the spine. Starting to tune in to the body's thoughts. So tuning in the sensation of stretch and engagement. And let's do this once more in either direction. We do this in every practice almost because it is such a gift for the spine and everything connects to the spine and through the spine. So keeping our spine strong and flexible and nourished is uh, just a lovely gift, a lovely opportunity. So let's shake out the hands here. So we just did some extension and flexion, that's rounding and arching, and now we'll do some side bending or what's called lateral flexion. So notice my front foot. I'm lifting the foot, keeping the knee bent. Now I'll rotate the lower leg out to the side. And as I do, I'm gonna shrug that shoulder on that side towards the hip, ear towards shoulder. Yeah, it's a side bend. 
And then we'll bring the foot back down, the head to center. And now we lift the other foot, rotate it out to the side, shrug shoulder to hip, hip to shoulder, maybe the head and neck follow. And let's go side to side. So I like to think about this a bit like our, our cat cow. And maybe we exhale to one side, inhale back to center. Other side. Slow and steady, again connecting to stretch, to engagement. As one side engages and shortens, you might feel that delicious stretch along the other side of the body that's opening. A couple more times in either direction. Again, nourishing your spine. Building strength and flexibility into the waist. And noticing how that feels. Come back to center. Let's widen the knees and press into a nice long child pose. So dropping the hips towards the heels, maybe walking the arms out in front, really trying to walk those fingers forward, kind of grip the mat here, and then rest the forehead down between those upper arms. Now notice if the forehead is hovering, that maybe we cross the forearms and stack to support the head. Again, we're dropping hips towards heels. And maybe close your eyes here and let's come back to that breath awareness that kind of anchors us here in the present, nudging us towards a deeper state of relaxation. Let's inhale, feel the expansion of the abdomen. Exhaling, softening and settling into the pose. Inhale, expand into the back, expand into the waist. And exhale, release. A couple more breaths like that. When you feel ready, returning to your tabletop position. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to put together cat-cow and that side bending into something called a barrel roll, where we're drawing a big circle with our waist, again, moving through all of those end ranges we explored. I kind of imagine I'm trying to sort of clean out the inside of a barrel with my spine, <laughs> with my torso. Um, so we'll just see how that feels today. It might feel really curious. This is not something we often do. And of course, that side bending isn't going to require a leg lift this time. So it might be nice to start as we round. And then we're going to side bend to one side and then drop the belly down. There's some arching. We're going to stretch over to the other side and then we're back to the rounding. So play with it, you know, parts of it might be easier to find than others. You'll notice I really want to bend my elbows here just to kind of get into it. But it's going to look and feel differently for everyone. Yeah. There might be a lot of sensations along the way. You need to slow it down and kind of find the rounding. Find the side bend, find the arch, and the other round. Let's circle two more times in this direction out that whole barrel. And then we'll meet in that rounded position and we'll change direction. It might be easier or more challenging as we side bend to the opposite side, find that arch. And again, you might close your eyes. Imagine trying to kind of move into that space of a barrel 
through the waist, through the mid torso, trying to draw that circle around. And do that, a, let's say three more times. Keep pushing the ground away, keeping those shoulders and hands quite stable, hopefully comfortable. Barrel roll. One more. Beautiful. And then we'll come back to center. Let's widen the knees again. Let's press back into our child pose. And again, walk the arms long or stack the forearms to support the head. Close your eyes. You may have built quite a bit of heat there into the center of your body. Your breath might feel stronger. You might even feel your heart beating. So let's drop deep within and invite the in-breath to fill that space. And the out-breath to soften and settle the whole body. A few more like this. Now, when you feel ready, you can come back to kneeling. And I know there's been a lot on our knees today, and we just have one more bit of movement here from kneeling. And I am going to invite us to, um, to invite the feet in a little bit here. So you'll notice as I'm kneeling that I'm going to tuck my toes under, maybe even my wayward baby toes. Um, yeah, and this might be enough foot stretch for me, for me to be kneeling and have the toes tucked is great. Um, if you wanna play a little bit with deepening the stretch, you could drop your hips towards your heels. Uh, if deep knee bends don't serve you, you could even have a little pillow behind your bum on top of your heels so that you stop about halfway. So I'm gonna let you kind of roll with that, coming down to those heels anytime you want to and lifting back up or keeping in that upright position, even untucking the toes at any point. And now I'm going to add um, a little hand yoga. So again, the legs can stay really quiet or you can stay seated in the foot stretch or you can untuck those toes, kneel or sit comfortably because we're going to use the hands again. So I'm spreading those fingers wide. Yeah, quite active. Like I'm trying to reach those fingers out as far as I can. Mm -hmm. Now I'm bending just the fingers, just the digits. So not fists, just digits and then spreading them wide. Let me do that a few times. If I'm seated on those heels, maybe I'm gonna lift for a moment and just make sure that's a manageable sensation. Go a little faster with my fingers. Fast fingers. Uh, notice how that feels. I'm gonna go super fast fingers, maybe sit on my heels again, maybe not. Yep, and then shake out those hands. Next one. So spread the fingers wide. Now we're going to make fists, spread fingers wide. I kind of feel like I'm trying to flick finger, flick water off my fingers. You might be able to hear that. Let's go faster. Again, send some love to those feet if you need to. Untuck the toes whenever you want. We're gonna go as fast as we can until it doesn't even work. Woo, shake that out. Okay, final one. Spread the fingers as wide as they'll go. Funny idea here to imagine. Imagine your thumbs are afraid of your pinkies. They're trying to get away from each other. Feel that stretch? And now we're gonna turn the palms. Kind of think this is a sort of like a queenly wave, a royal wave. And then maybe we'll go mid speed. Yeah, probably starting to feel this in the forearms. Mid speed. Thumbs are afraid of the pinkies. Let's go faster. See if you're still breathing. Ah, 
Ah, soft shoulders, soft forehead. Go as fast as you can. And shake it out. Okay, we can untuck those toes. Give them a little, a little tap here. So if you had those toes tucked the whole time, you might need a few moments here for the feet to release. Again, if deep knee bends are available, you could sit on the tops of the feet like this and really feel the tops of the feet stretching. You could even lean back into the hands and lift your shins. This is not for everyone, I am fully aware, but for some folks, this will be a lovely stretch. So wherever you need to be here, let's offer three more breaths. And deep inhale, soft exhale. Wonderful. So I am going to put just a little bit of a downward dog hover table flow in for the next minute or two. And I know this one again is not for everyone, but for those of you who do want to just play with strengthening through the upper body um, and the core, we've been doing a lot of hand work. So I think this might be more comfortable to do today. So again, I'll guide you into it slowly and you can choose your own adventure here. For some of us, we might not lift up to downward dog, or if we do, we might not lift the knees to hover. So again, I'll cue it and we'll just see what happens. Yeah, options for movement. So as I connect my hands here, I'm spreading my fingers and really reaching out to the fingertips and the edges of the palms. I'm tucking my toes under, we, we kind of prepared the toes for that. And now lifting the knees off the mat just an inch or two. And some of us will just be able to tell if this is a good exercise for us, just on how that feels. We'll lower and then we'll lift again. Yeah, strong core here. So think about drawing that tailbone slightly down, drawing the pubic bone towards the navel. And we'll lower the knees again. Let's shake out the hands. I know we're not a downward dog yet, but that's our hover table. And lifting in and out of that hover table is a beautiful way to build strength into the upper body. Yeah, so that is a lovely standalone exercise. If you want to play with downward dog, let's lift the knees. And now we're going to shift the shoulders back and up. I'm going to lift those hips back and up. We'll look down at the feet. We're going to walk the dog. So I'm going to press down through one heel, bend the opposite knee. And now this might feel like too short a dog for you. So let's slowly lower the knees and then maybe walk the hands a little further. So every body is different. And let me take my socks off. Um, and we will have to adjust just to meet ourselves where we're at. So again, if we walk the hands a little forward, I'm going to tuck the toes. Let's hover the knees and let's press to our downward dog. So again, it feels like those shoulders lifting up, those arms overhead, lifting my sitting bones to the ceiling. And we'll just play with a flow for about a minute. Maybe with the exhale, we slowly lower the knees to the mat or we hover the knees. We'll take a breath here. Maybe we exhale back to downward dog. Inhaling. Exhale, lower the knees or hover the knees. We'll use the exhale to press back to downward dog. And use the exhale to lower the knees or hover the knees. Let's do this a few more times in each direction. You can take breaks whenever you want to. You can modify and adjust. Again, we, we can follow the breath with the movement, or we can just trust the breath to support the movement, however it shows up. We'll do this a few more times in either direction. Feeling the heat in the belly, the heat in the shoulders, the hands. Maybe that stretch through the hamstrings. the beating of our own heart, the strength of our own breath. 
once more either direction. And one more time, we'll lower our knees, untuck those toes, press into a nice, long child pose. Feeling the strength of your own breath, and the beating of your own heart. You might circle the wrists here. You might rock the hips. A couple more breaths. And now, as we come out of our child pose, let's make our way to standing. This is where a chair or the wall might help. Make your way to standing any way you need to. And once you're upright, let's find our mountain. So notice if the feet are comfortably under you. Do you feel stable, comfortable and balanced? This is where a chair nearby or the wall can be a good friend. Let's inhale and find our full height. Exhale, the tops of the shoulders soften. A couple more breaths, just like that. Okay. So this whole flow could actually be done with your back right against the wall. So just know that's available because we will be um, just playing with some asymmetry, which can be challenging for balance. And we'll be starting by taking a wide-legged stance. Yeah. Just notice how it feels to have the feet wide. Notice how it feels to push the feet down into the mat. Usually I feel some engagement here through my hips and my glutes. Notice how it feels to try to pull your legs towards each other. Yeah, you're going to feel the inner thighs say, hi. Maybe if you push your feet away from each other, you're going to feel the outer hips say hi as well. So again, there's the pulling together. Notice how that feels. The pulling apart. And then pushing down through the feet, hopefully is a little combination of both. You feel it here, you feel it here, pushing down. It's okay if you don't, I'm just planting seeds. Okay, so we're already feeling the strength there as we push down. Now let's find our left foot. We're gonna pivot on the left foot and turn the toes towards that end of the mat. And we'll scooch the right heel back a smidgen. Yeah. From here, I'm gonna sweep the back arm up just so it's in line with the shoulder, but it could stay on the hip quite beautifully. And then we'll reach the front arm up in line as well. Yeah, so we've got those reaching arms. Now notice your front knee. Bend the front knee and straight. Just a few more soft shoulders, reaching fingertips. Yeah, if it helps, you could gaze over those front fingertips. Find that gaze point. We'll do this three more times. As we do, think about pressing down through the outer edge of your front foot. It's gonna keep that outer hip quite active and it's going to keep sending that knee towards the second or third toe. I think we've got one more to go. Yeah, great. So we're gonna hold here for a moment and as we do, Let's turn the palms to face out, reach the arms overhead, press the palms together and bring them to the heart. Yeah. We'll interlace the fingers and press forward, sweep up and release. And let's release the front leg, release the arms. And we'll do it all again on the other side. So bring the feet parallel for a moment. Again, we can press down through both feet. 
And we'll try to push the feet away. Pull the legs together. Push down. Part. Together. Press. Locate the right foot. We're pivoting on the heel, turning the toes to that end of the mat. I'm going to scoot the other heel back a smidgen. Yeah. Getting nice and upright here. Let's sweep the back arm up. See that it's in line with the shoulder and then the front arm as well. I've got the soft shoulders reaching fingertips. Push down through those feet. Sweep and the front knee and straighten. This is our warrior two, Avira Bhadrasana, which is about the peaceful warrior. If you are standing in your strength, You've got this openness, this spaciousness through the heart. Yeah. And you're standing in your strength and your love. We'll do this about three more times. Often as I gaze over my fingertips, I imagine I'm gazing at my beloved, whoever, whatever that is. It helps to soften my forehead and my jaw if I gaze with love. So let's gaze with love here a moment as we keep the knee bent, as we press through those feet. And now we'll sweep the arms overhead, press the palms together. Interlace, reach and sweep. And back to that warrior. Beautiful, soft and reaching. And we'll release the arms, release the feet. Yeah. Again, let's press down and out and in and out and in. Press down. And let's return to our warrior two on either side with our sun salute arms and just notice how it feels to return again. So we'll pivot on the left heel, turning the toes to the back wall. Scoot the other heel back. Find the back arm, find the front arm, find that loving gaze as we bend the front knee, pressing into that outer edge. Soft and reaching. Sweep the arms up. Reach and sweep. And back down. Loving gaze. Two more breaths. And release the arms and the leg. Let's find our way to the other side. The toes to the front, scooching the heel back. Reach the back, reach the front, soft and reaching as we bend the front knee. Arms reach overhead and together to press. And let's interlace, reach, and release. Two more breaths in our warrior two, that open heart, that loving gaze, rooted in your strength. Releasing the arms, releasing the leg, bringing the feet parallel. From here, we will be walking our hands down our legs and into a forward fold. And then after that point, um, I'm going to get you to guide the legs in a bit. Come down to hands and knees with your feet still in this orientation to the mat. So our hands will be off the front, our legs will be on the mat. This will make sense, but I wanted to tell you it's coming. Yeah. So again, as the legs and feet are parallel, let's walk the hands down the thighs. Bend the knees. You could rest your forearms on your thighs here, keeping your head in line with your heart, especially if you have high or low blood pressure, or you could reach for the floor. You could let your head hang. But please feel free to keep the knees bent. And what you'll see is because my knees are bent, my pelvis can kind of tip forward and I can hang out of my pelvis, letting the highest points be those sitting bones, 
Whereas if I were to straighten my legs, I'd be hanging off my back, if you can see from this um, angle. So again, I bend the knees, I can drop the torso forward and really hang out of the pelvis here for three more breaths. Inhale, feel that expansion. Exhale, let your head go, let your shoulders go. A couple more. So as I mentioned before, now we're going to come to kneeling. So if you can connect your hands to the floor with bent knees, wonderful. Otherwise, you're going to get there in a, a dissimilar way, but we're going to walk the feet in a little bit and then lower onto our knees. And what you'll see here is that I'm on tabletop, in hand tabletop position. My knees are on the mat. Pretend this, this other mat isn't here. My hands are on the floor. And you'll see from here that I'm going to walk my knees away from each other. And this is where having your knees on your yoga mat is going to prevent the legs from going any wider than you want them to go. If those knees were um, on the floor, they might slide out. So knees are as wide apart as you feel comfortable with. There's going to be some stretch, but you want to be in that place of openness, not pain. From here, you might naturally want to come onto your forearms. And then we're going to start to shift the hips forward and back. And I'll give you a side view in a moment. But this allows us to find a little bit of wiggle room. We might find a little more stretch as we shift back or even as we stretch forward. Uh, you could bring your forehead to your hands if you need to as we continue to shift forward and back. So again, I'll give you that side view so you get a sense of the range here. And it could be a much tinier range and that would be wonderful. We're all just looking for a little wiggle room. This is our frog pose. I don't know the Sanskrit for frog. But you can see these are kind of frog legs that we've got going. And this can be a bit tender on those inner knees. So of course, putting blankets under the knees will help a lot or bringing those knees closer. We won't be here for much longer. And that final piece, if you wanted to add to it, is a bit like when we were side bending and we used our lower leg to kind of rock out to the side. Watch my front leg. I'm just lifting the lower leg, keeping the knee on the mat, and then back down. Again, this might be too tender for some, but for some people, this might be a real aha moment as we find internal rotation um, and our hips awaken to a really novel bit of movement. So we'll do this a few more times in either direction. If you want to peek over a shoulder and look at that leg lift, that's fine. If those knees are just getting too tender, feel free to guide those knees together. We'll meet in a child pose really soon. Let's do this twice more either side if you so choose. Right, and then we'll slowly get our hands back under us, get our knees back under us. And now you can turn to get your whole body on your mat. And we can press into one more child pose. Remembering that um, deep sensations of stretch are considered a stressor for the nervous system. So for a lot of us, that inner thigh stretch felt kind of intense. So as we rest here in child pose, let's use that relaxation breath pattern to nourish our nervous system. Inhaling soft and deep. Exhaling soft and slow. Couple more.
And now we will make our way onto our back. Well, so once you are lying down, just take your time getting there. And let's walk those feet to the edges of the mat with knees bent. Arms can be comfortable at your sides. Allowing both knees to fall to one side and then the other. And let's do that a few more times. And noticing your breath here, soothed by the rhythm of the legs and by the breath's own rhythm and deepening, softening. This tension falls away from the body as we settle onto this support beneath us. I wanted to return to those frog's legs um, but explore a slightly different opening and I wanted to also invite some opening into the shoulders and chest. And we'll hold this stretch, um, really soften into it for just a minute or so before our final relaxation. So as usual, very optional. But maybe walk your feet towards each other until the inner edges touch. And then we'll allow the soles of the feet to touch as the knees come out to the sides. Yeah. From here, you can always take the legs longer you know, or we could bring them really close or somewhere in between. So you're welcome to play here. In fact, that's kind of a nice kind of exercise on its own. You can press the soles together, go a little straighter, pressing a little closer. Just notice how that feels. As long as it feels nice through the low back, maybe we press a little bit down through the low back, firming the belly, and then see if there's a sweet spot that we can rest in. From here, um, we will place the hands kind of on that fleshy bit at the base of the neck and not quite at the shoulders, where someone who's going to give you a massage kind of grabs your shoulders and squeezes that bit. So you're going to grab that bit with your hands, and then you don't have to squeeze it. We'll bring the elbows out to the sides from there. So the hands are just tucked under, the elbows are out to the sides. And especially in the shoulders, this stretch can be quite subtle at first. But as we offer the breath here for a minute or so, we might notice that gravity is helping us to soften and open a bit into some sensations of stretch. So let's use that relaxation breath pattern to invite some ease into this experience. Perhaps closing your eyes. Soften in your belly to receive that deep inhale. Softening the whole body with each exhale. Inhale, imagine the whole body expanding. Exhale, the whole body settles. If your mind wanders, that's okay. If you need to adjust because those stretchy feelings are a bit too much, it's okay, please do. We'll be here for about 30 more seconds. So five or six more slow, deep in breaths. Soft or slower out breath. Mm, 
As you complete those breaths, very slowly guide those knees together. Maybe give yourself a little hug. And this is our segue into final relaxation. Of course, if there are any other poses or stretches you wish to do, um, you're welcome to press pause and just keep moving, keep practicing for as long as you need to. If you are ready to move into final relaxation, you may need to add socks or a sweater, some extra softness beneath you or extra warmth above you, sometimes a little uh, pillow under the knees or under the head. Just add a little more comfort to allow you to relax a little deeper. And once you are comfortable, once more closing your eyes. Tuning in to the breath once more. Your constant companion. Maintaining this relationship between your own inner space and that outer space, that space around you. We invite it in on the in-breath and out on that out-breath. As if we're riding this wave of breath through the present moment. And your mind will wander, that's what minds do. But let's keep returning to the breath as this perfect anchor for the present moment. Bringing us back again and again, to the presence of the breath, within the presence of the body. Feel the breath moving your body, even in this place of relative stillness. Tune into that feeling of expanding with the in-breath, of softening and settling with each out-breath.
your mind has wandered, that's okay. And come back to the breath. six more breaths to this pose. Each exhale a little longer than the last. If it suits you, you might once more bring a hand to rest to the belly and one to the chest. And again, offer yourself some kindness, some sweetness, a prayer, an affirmation, some kind words just for you. Welcome to stay right where you are for as long as you are comfortable, eventually making your way upright and back into your day. And remember to take it slow and be gentle with yourself. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.